all the spiritual concepts ultimately are illusion. They're more fodder. They're more food for the ego. The ego for the set, apparent separate identity that actually is not real. Even ignorance, even I said ignorance is the root of suffering. Ignorance is also unreal. There's no ignorance. I guess another thing about these teachings, if we can call them teachings, yeah, let's call them teachings, is that they're not for everyone, right? They're not for everyone. And we all know this already. That shouldn't, in a way, that's a bit shocking to say that. Um, but we know that already. These teachings are not for everyone. Now, what do I mean by that? I don't mean that these are closed off teachings. No, it's open to everyone. But it's... The only people who it's going to benefit are those who have a sincere, sincere interest. And who are open to something beyond the words. If you've come here, and, and I don't think most of you have, but if, if, say, someone's come here and they're looking to argue or accumulate concepts only, only accumulate concepts, then that doesn't get you very far. If you've come here to understand and accumulate concepts, but you're willing to go beyond those concepts, that's good. Because it's good to accumulate the concepts and understand them, but then realize that the teachings ultimately aren't true. So you, you, can't, you shouldn't really argue about, oh, this teaching's better than that teaching, better than this teaching, better than that teaching, because even genuine teaching can have contradictory mess messages. So this teaching is not for everyone. Usually the people who are drawn to it are ready for it in some way. But there can be problems with this teaching. Um, if your sense of self is not very well grounded, if you have emotional issues, this teaching can be very disruptive. It can be. I'm not saying it is, but it can be because it's like a rug being pulled out from underneath you. Because your sense of identity can be taken away from you and that can be very disorientating and confusing. So you have to have an interest, a desire, an openness to the teachings. The way the teachings work is, I don't really understand how they work, ultimately. It's mysterious how it actually um, results in liberation, let's say. How that actually happens is there's, there's some kind of, you know, I can give you a lot of, and I've written an article about how teachings work. I've written many articles about how, how spiritual teachings work. But there's something mysterious about it as well. There's an X factor which we can call the grace of God. Or we, or we can just say it's mysterious. So there's an X factor about it as well. So I can't promise, in a way, I can't promise liberation for you. But I can kind of try my best. For what it's worth. Um, yeah, so if the ego is very fragile, if you've got, if you've got very low self-esteem or your ego is quite chaotic or your emotions are quite chaotic, and this can be quite disruptive. So it's good to have some kind of stabilizing factor in your life prior to coming to non-duality. And that tends to be the case for most people who turn up at these meetings. And you might be sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, I've got a load of emotional issues. But the fact you're sitting here means that you're already or you're willing to face them and face the, and face any challenges that come your way, I would hope, or that's the, the suggestion. Because most people, if they've got more severe emotional issues, they're not so interested in non-duality. They'll be more interested in things that help them with their emotions. So they'll be drawn to sorts of teachings that address those things more. Just as if, if your washing machine isn't working, yes, I'm talking about washing machines again, I like talking about washing machines, as you know. 
if your washing machine isn't working, say your washing machine is leaking, so it's starting to flood your house, and it's becoming quite dangerous now, you've got a lot of flood water coming in, you're probably not going to be so concerned at that moment in time about non-duality. You're going to be concerned about fixing your washing machine, stopping the flooding. And when you've sorted that, your washing machine out and you've stopped the flooding, then you can kind of come back to non-duality. And the same with emotional problems and things like that. If you've got a lot of emotional issues, they're going to be at the forefront of your mind. You're going to be less interested in non-duality. And that's, that's correct. That's the right way it should be. This isn't for everyone, and the timing isn't always right for everyone. So sometimes it's the emotional stuff that is more important at some times in your life, and that's sometimes what you should attend to. Um, what I sometimes do, I do dip into that foray sometimes. I do go into the emotional side of things sometimes, especially more on one-to-one -one meetings. This sort of group call is more the non-dual side. So the teachings of people who have a certain level of maturity, emotional maturity, um, I would say social maturity as well. So it's because it can be de because these teachings can be destabilizing. If you don't have a good no a good emotional base, you don't have you don't you don't have. Um, well, it's important to have good basic ethical and um, basic ethics as well. Because of the way the teachings work, they say things, there's no one here. This is an illusion. If you don't have those ethical principles in place, if you don't have social moral values already instilled, then this can be, again, quite disruptive. And again, I'm very happy to say most people who come to these meetings, they, you know, they already have this you know, hardwired into them. They're not, they don't find it difficult in general to be good people, to be what in Sanskrit is called dharmic, follow dharma. So be good to other people, be good to yourself, love other, love other people, love yourself. If you have social responsibilities like a job, parents to look after, dependents to look after, friends, family, whatever, you're, you're generally a decent person in these areas. That's important. And you have to have, be open to the teachings. There's an element of faith there as well. I think it, for most people, it's important to have a teacher that they, there's some kind of faith or relationship with, some kind of trust, some kind of respect and openness to. And by all means, I don't expect that to be me. If you do resonate with me, great. But if there's someone else you resonate with, you're very welcome to come to these meetings, but then I'm maybe a secondary or tertiary teacher for you, you know? Maybe you have a teacher that you resonate more with, and that's totally fine with me. I don't mind. Um, and if you do resonate more with me, that's great. That's, that's nice too. But the point is for you, if you can find a teacher who you resonate with, who you trust, who you can have some kind of faith in, that can be very, very important. And when I was seeking, I didn't really appreciate that. I mean, I never had a teacher really, but then I, I developed this through my relationship with Ramana, with Ramana Maharishi. And um, by his grace, luckily enough, I, um, I disappeared. You know? So I'm eternally thankful to Ramana and Ramana's presence in my life. Um, but the only, the only way I was able to kind of take that last step, as it were, was through faith in him and his grace. And exactly how I did that, I have no idea. It's a mystery to me. Suddenly just sort of, over time, the suffering just went. And it gets to such a point where you, when I, when I was seeking, I was, trying, I was desperately trying to figure it all out. And then when liberation comes, it's, it's impossible to suffer, basically. Before you're trying not to suffer, and then it becomes, it's impossible to suffer. Um, so that's that's what's being shared here. It's the end of suffering. Now that doesn't mean Tom doesn't experience a whole range of emotions. Tom does. I do. But there's no suffering. 
that's a subjective thing you know you might see me and it might look like i'm suffering um but you know that doesn't happen very often even to be honest but it does happen where someone might if, if you walked past me at a particular moment in time it might look like i'm stressed or pissed off or annoyed because those things happen but it's irrelevant it's totally irrelevant to me and that's not something i can choose or do anything about um it's strange anyway because there's no going back there's no going back it's like something is lost you've lost that that's ability to to identify and to suffer that ability is gone so it's it's very difficult to explain how that happens because it's not there anymore um it's a bit i was gonna say it's a bit like if when you're a kid you got very upset if somebody took your favorite toy and now if someone takes that same toy away from you now as an adult it just doesn't it just doesn't bother you and you you can't even make it bother you you know because you just don't care about that toy anymore that you used to care about i don't know if that makes sense <laughs>